What up, friends? Welcome back to another episode of Tag Time. Welcome to the third month of the year. We are pushing right ahead through the calendar. I hope you were here last week. If you weren't here last week, stop. Go back and see last week's video because we're going to pick up from there and we're going to talk about some things we're going to start from where we left off last time. Also, don't forget, sign up for our list. We have a list. I send out a few text messages here and there. I can also send you the link to the video so that you can find it nice and easy. All you have to do is type in the word tag in your text message, T-A-G-G, because teens are God's gift, of course. T-A-G-G, and you send that to the phone number, 713-903-8533, right? Send it there. You'll be on the list. You'll get the messages. I'm not going to send you a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not going to bug you or bother you or anything like that. I do want to take an opportunity sometimes to encourage you, check in on you, and give you some updates and some information. We have some stuff coming up. I hope you'll be available for that. I don't want to take too much time because I want to get into it, and I don't want to go over. Last time I went a little bit over. Sorry, not sorry. We're talking about creation. We're talking about the world, the earth. We're talking about God's creation, which is the planet we live on, the solar system we live in, and us, we people. Everything that we see that's in nature, part of Mother Nature, outside, all that kind of stuff, whatever it is we want to call it this week, that's part of God's creation. So when you see the trees and the animals and stuff, think and remember, that's creation. When you see other people, remember, God's creation, and you are God's creation. So last week we were talking about the fact that the sun, all the stuff that we see that's in nature, God made that, and so we call it creation because it was purposefully made. It wasn't accidentally formed or wasn't the result of some cataclysmic event or something crazy. And we also ended up talking about how God put us here to take care of his creation. It is our job, it's your job, and it's my job, whether you like the outdoors or not. It's our job to take care of creation that God made. So, that means that we shouldn't be litter bugs. We shouldn't be throwing trash all out. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a tree hugger. I don't believe in the Green New Deal, or um, I don't believe in man-made global warming, or anything like that. We can talk about that another time. But what I do believe is that it is man's job to take care of creation. It is our job and what God wants us to do to make sure that the earth is well taken care of. Now that doesn't mean that we can't use fossil fuels and other crazy stuff like that, if you know what I'm talking about. If not, don't even worry about it. But God put us here. He wants us to take care of the earth. So it's very important for us to make sure that we do what's necessary to take care of uh, wild spaces to take care of wild animals and things like that. Hunting is good. It actually has a very good purpose. We're supposed to, uh, there are a lot of hunting conservationists out there. And the way hunting is performed is that there's only so much hunting. There's only so much fishing allowed in each space at each time. And it's done in such a way that the populations of animals will be able to reproduce at a very good rate they won't be endangered or extinct or things like that. There were times in history uh, where man in general uh, overhunted or overfished or over something, some type of animal population, and pushed some animals into extinction. That can happen. And God doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to take care. But if we don't do any hunting or any fishing, things will be overpopulated and then they'll be out of balance because it'll be too much. If we do too much, then things will be out of balance because there won't be enough. So we're supposed to do the things that are right and good to keep everything at a nice medium, medium or middle level. I want to take a look here at creation. We're going to look in Genesis chapter 1. This is where we're going to see the creation story. You can really look in Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. I want to focus mostly on 1. Maybe we'll dip into 2 a little bit. And there are some things that we can see about particular creation events. Now, there are other scriptures and things in the Bible that talk about the beginning of time and, and what God did and things like that. 
but we don't have all that time, right? Nope, we don't. So we're just going to look at a few things, look at some stuff in Genesis chapter 1. We'll probably try and go through most of the chapter, all right? But we're going to do it quickly, and we're going to do it in a way that you're going to learn more about who God is and what he did and what he wants you to do. All right, so Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's why we call it creation. God created the heaven, which is his place, and God created the earth, which is the place that he put us. And while we see that he did that, we're going to see that he also made the universe through there. I want to drop down to verse number three. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, this was not the sunlight. He said, turn the lights on. This was God, this was God light, lighting up the place so he could see when he was looking in this area that he wanted to put the earth. It says, God saw the light and it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So God called, God said, light be, let there be light. And there was light. Light was created. There, before this point, there wasn't the sun, moon, and stars. There wasn't daytime and nighttime. But he created it. He made it. So on the first day, he makes day and night, right? And all the stuff that causes that to happen. And then verse number six, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. So there was, you know, water all over the place. And God said, let there be land. Essentially, the Bible doesn't say that. That's my take on it. But God said, let there be land, firmament, earth, ground, dirt, rock. So God put in the ground, the firmament. And so he created that. And it divided the waters. And that's when the Pacific Ocean was separated from the Atlantic Ocean. Um, verse number seven. And the God made the firmament, firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under heaven be gathered together into one place and let there be dry land appear. And it was so. And he called the dry land earth and the and the and gathering together of the waters. He called seas and God saw that it was good. Uh, the fourth day says that he said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. So God is here creating grass and weeds and whatever the stuff is that's growing in the fields. He was creating things that would grow with seeds on the inside so that that would continue to grow. So God made creation. He made the world. He made the globe. And then he put into place systems that would cause that creation to run and to continue throughout the rest of time. So he put some things together. He gave it what it needed to continue, and he set that thing in motion. These are the days of the creation, or the creation story. The evening and the morning of the third day, God said, Let there be lights in the firmament uh, of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and days and years. So now he's making stars. The heaven, the second part of heaven he's calling, uh, we're looking at space and in the atmosphere. And so there's lights, and then uh, we can look at what's going on in the heavenlies, all right, what's going on in the sky. We can look at that and are able then to determine seasons, time, what's going on. So we know now that the earth is spinning and you can see uh, certain stars and constellations here and there. And people that have studied the skies and the, the, the signs of the, the stars and things, uh, they're able to know a lot more about our earth. That's how they found Jesus. If we fast forward to when Jesus was born, they were studying the, the stars. And so they were able to know what was going on in the world a little bit just because of that. And so now we have uh, machines that, that look at weather. We have computers that tell us what the temperature is probably gonna be next Thursday or uh, two weeks from now, things like that. All that comes because we learn through God speaking to us how to understand the creation that he made. So God goes through 
for time's sake, I can't read all of this stuff because uh, I'm trying not to make a part three. But if you look, I want you to read all throughout this chapter. We see God created this. God created that. He made that. And that thing was supposed to continue. Verse number 26, God said, let us make man after our image and after our likeness. So then God makes man. God uh, created man in his, in his image in verse 27. And then he created male and female. He made the man first. And if you look at another chapter, like in chapter 2, see that God had the man, had the man uh, given an assignment. He was doing some things. And then he later created the woman and brought the woman to the man. And at that point, he says, verse number 28, God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. Subdue is another word for us taking care of creation. Subdue means that we need to keep creation in check. Man is here to help the earth. Man is not a scourge on the earth. There's a lot of dystopian movies that are built around the fact that man is bad for the planet. There are some people that think that, some ideologies about that. I mean, if you look at the Avenger series, um, what's my man's name? The bad guy, the main bad guy uh, who came in the end game and he snapped his finger and he, you know, he wiped out all those people. He believed that people were a scourge on the planet. We were messing up the planet. He believed that he was balanced. And so he believed that mankind had gotten to a point where there were too many people and 50% of people had to go so that we didn't destroy the earth and that was supposed to be the best thing for, for mankind, right? And, uh, and there are a lot of people that actually believe in that, that manner of thinking. But no, man was put here to subdue the earth. We're not supposed to trash the earth. We're not supposed to uh, lay waste to the earth, but we're here to subdue it. We're here to keep it in check. We're here to enjoy it. We're here to be fruitful and multiply we're supposed to multiply as people, but we're also supposed to multiply, replenish the, the world around us. That's why when, you know, sometimes when they take buildings, uh, they cut out a lot of land over here and they plant trees over there. And so we're constantly overseeing this balance of the earth, making sure that everything stays within balance, within the ecological system that God made. That's what we're here for. Man is not a scourge on the earth. Man is the thing that's here beneficial for the earth. If not for man, the earth would have been out of balance and messed up a long, long time ago. The earth would be inhabitable because of the lack of man, not because of the presence of man. So certainly there are some things that we could do that would trash the planet or, or make it very bad or um, uh, not good, but it's not because we're here. It's not because we're humans doing what humans do. God just wants us to subdue it. He doesn't want us to be um, thinking that we, you know, we can't live the lives that he's created us to live. We can't use the understanding and the knowledge and the building and the technology. It's not that we can't do those things, understand those things, or enjoy those things. So he made man on the sixth day. He made animals and he gave man the, the opportunity, Adam particularly, to name those animals. And there's some other great things in our creation story. We might do a part three, okay? We might do a third part, talk a little bit more about creation because it's just that big. It's just that important. How do we do everything dealing with creation in one little bit anyway? You know what? I miss you. I miss seeing you. I hope everything is well. Drop me a line. Come holler at me at church come uh, soon when we're going to have our uh, lunch hangout. Hope you'll be able to make it. We're just going to go hit up Whataburger again so we can kick it, chill, and catch up with one another. Make sure that you sign up uh, to tag or so you can get on our tag list so you can get the updates and information for that. That's it, friends. PC Scott here. I'm out. Tag. You're it.